Our world and our society are constantly changing. Products and services are becoming more and more complex and sophisticated. New technologies are becoming a big part of our daily lives. We are also now confronting new challenges such as energy sustainability or global warming. Our old ways of solving problems are becoming obsolete and due to the increasing complexity of our needs and the problems that our lifestyle generates, it is necessary now to take a holistic approach to problem solving. We are here defining a new term, interdisciplinarity, or more specifically, interdisciplinary thinking. But what does that mean? Well, interdisciplinarity is the collaboration between different disciplines or areas of study to achieve innovative solutions during the creation process. Although the creation process is not linear, we will assume here that it has four different stages since they have different characteristics and also a different approach to interdisciplinarity. These stages are research, concept, evaluation and implementation. The research methodology can take many different shapes, but it is always bounded to the increase of knowledge of a subject. The concept stage is where we use divergent thinking. We set free our minds to come up with as many crazy ideas as possible, to later turn them into innovative solutions or innovative ways of using old solutions. The evaluation studies the feasibility and narrows down the possibilities using convergent thinking. The implementation is to take action and put into operation the product or service. Here we need the specialists to develop the outcome. Although still well organized, they can work more independently. The evaluation process has traditionally been a multidisciplinary task. Now, it is during the research and concept stages where innovation is born and therefore where the different perspectives of the different disciplines are gaining more importance. It is here when interdisciplinary thinking comes into action. Let's now think of different disciplines carrying out their work independently. They find a problem and they use the tools they have to solve it. But that is not enough. Usually projects are not only related to just one area of study. They can be analyzed from the perspective of different disciplines. Let's now imagine the outcome as jigsaw created by the input of the different areas related to the project. If they are working independently, they can only see the information related to their piece of work. That can have two negative effects in the process. If their pieces of work cannot be joined, it is a waste of time. On the opposite hand, if the results are too similar, it is a waste of resources. If we get them to think all together from the beginning, it will be easier to think of the project as a whole and to be more precise handling the resources and the information during the process. For all those reasons, it is now time to work towards that interdisciplinary collaboration and find out the way to make it effective. It is necessary to develop a solid platform to enable this process. The first step for that is to identify the barriers that can come up during these sort of practices. Some of those difficulties are very similar to general teamwork obstacles, whereas others are more specific to interdisciplinarity. In first place, it is important to be aware of the fact that collaboration always happens between people. Therefore, good communication and understanding are vital for its success. Gathering different disciplines implies to bring together different perspectives, and when people feel strong about their ideas, it's easy to pass from discussion to argument. Therefore, it is very important that all the members take an open-minded and respectful approach to the discussion. But that doesn't always happen. If the communication is not channeled, there will always be negative comments such as that wouldn't work or we don't do it that way. There will be people monopolizing the conversation and trying to impose their ideas. Sometimes two professionals can argue even saying the same. Or a professional might not participate just because he does not feel in control of the subject and he's afraid of the other's reaction to his ignorance. Listening to others sometimes seems to be really difficult and it is then when parallel conversations start to take place. Or they can even leave the discussion mentally or even physically. In order to assure the good progress of the dialogue, it is necessary the presence of an enabler, a person who can channel that communication. Apart from this enabler, at the discussion table during the research and concept stages, all the members and their inputs are at the same level. All of them are equals. But carrying out a project does not only rely on thinking together. It will be naive to believe that at the evaluation stage all the disciplines will have the same weight. There are two main aspects of the team to be established, the members' contribution and their roles within the team. P 
People need to know what they are meant to do, how, who with, what for. If those roles are not well distributed, people tend to disperse their efforts and lose track. The group might eventually achieve a result, but it will definitely entail a waste of resources. The lack of understanding in the contribution to be played is a common cause of failure in interdisciplinary collaboration. For instance, to believe that our input will have a bigger impact on the outcome than it will actually have can damage the progress of the project and usually leads to frustration and unnecessary competitiveness. All the members of the team are individuals with their own background, goals, motivations and agenda and it is important to identify what everyone expects to achieve with their participation in a project as well as to assure that those reasons fit into the global aims of the job. In a big project, it might happen that one discipline is subordinated to the main domain, being used mostly as a tool and without much voice in the overall project. If this is not settled down from the beginning, it is probable to end up losing that collaboration. Another obstacle for the good dynamics of the team is the discrepancy between self-perception and external perception. We take for granted that the people around us see and understand our actions as we do. They can like it or not, but they see the same we do. But unfortunately, that is not always the case, and that difference of perception can bring confusion and serious misunderstandings. But we found out something very interesting in our research, and it is that the team actually has a very solid opinion about the rest of the members. If you ask individually to the members of a team the personal and professional qualities of the rest of their colleagues, they will have a very similar opinion about their teammates. That leads to think that the team perception is right, whether that opinion matches with the self-perception or not. But why does that discrepancy happen? Well, we can find several reasons for this fact. In first place, it might happen that the self-perception is just wrong and our idea of our behavior doesn't match reality. It might also happen that our view of ourselves is based on a previous experience which wasn't shared with the rest of the members and therefore they cannot use that information to form their judgment. Finally, it is also possible that our reasoning is not coming across and people cannot work out the motivation of our actions. That's why providing a framework for feedback is so important. To finalize, just to say that interdisciplinary thinking as a business strategy has a great potential. It is actually becoming a need because of the new challenges that our world present and the obsolete way of problem solving we still use. It is the best path to innovation and it can help us to save time and resources. It can be used in any sort of project and in any sort of field, as long as it is necessary to think. It is to be used at the beginning of the process, in the research and concept stages. Interdisciplinarity is a team activity, and as we have seen, the communication and understanding are essential, as well as a good coordination of the roles and contribution of the different areas. We have also stated the importance of providing feedback for the improvement of the team dynamics. Otherwise, it has been also mentioned the need of an enabler to channel that interaction within the team. Finally, it is worthy to point out that interdisciplinarity is a great opportunity for designers. Design is one of the areas of a study focused on provoking creativity and specialized in the thinking process. Otherwise, it is also an area based on collaboration and with a long experience in facilitation.